Hi everyone. Today I'm going to deal with tank drum maintenance, as it's crucially important for the instrument to wear well and be tuned up for a long time. You know, we've just finished filming a video outside. As the weather is frosty, the tank drum has cooled down. It still remains pretty cold in this warm room. The temperature fall leads to condensate accumulation and can eventually result in rust formation. Even though every tank drum has a high-quality protective flambeau and finish on its outer side, the coating is apparently thinner on its inner side, so rust is mostly formed inside the instrument. In order to prevent it, I should heat the drum. To do this, I am going to use a hot air gun, but even a regular hair dryer will be suitable for such a purpose. All you should do is to heat it to the room temperature to remove condensate. Condensate looks like white stain marks covering your instrument and immediately disappearing. Along with that, you can clean the tank drum with a dry cloth. That will be also useful. However, just hidden is enough. When hidden your tank drum, you can also play it with the free hand, so you'll never get bored. Well, the tank drum is heated now, it's warm and fine. When heated it becomes amazingly nice to the touch, so awesome. Now let me point out again that you should heat your tank drum if it's overcooled, because of cold or even frosty weather, or in similar cases. You should avoid rapid changes of temperature. In case you moistened the instrument for some reason, for instance, you were playing in the rain or it suddenly fell into a river, a pool or a bath, whatever the case may be, you should wipe it completely dry with a cloth twice and then dry it with a hair dryer until the drum becomes warm. If you live a currently stay by the sea or in a high humidity area, you must dry your instruments every day, especially if you play it outside. It often occurs that after a vacation by the sea, people complain that their tank drum got rusty and ask for advice. Just follow these rules, guys, and you'll manage to protect your drum from rust. The second thing that can damage the steel instrument constitutes in heavy shocks and dropping. If you drop it on asphalt or concrete or on the floor or even on tiles, it won't be destroyed, but a ton or two may be punctured or deformed or can curve concavely and therefore get untuned later. Yeah, it's possible to restore it, but you'd better not drop your tank drum. Treat it well and carefully. It's an expensive and high-quality item that you should keep safe and never throw intentionally. Yeah, look who's talking. <laughs> well, personally, I can throw it up, but I always catch it. I take full responsibility for my actions, so it can't fall. That's actually okay if it falls on the soft cross, for instance, but guys, please mind my advice. Another important issue is the way you play the tank drum. As for me, I mostly play it with my fingers, and I sometimes use sticks too. As you guys know, you always get sticks with your tank drum, so feel free to use them. They give another tone quality to the sound, and the effect is quite peculiar. Besides, it's easier to learn to play the tank drum using sticks. The point is that you shouldn't beat the tons very hard. Otherwise, the metal gets high load, so the tons may gradually deform after a while. Some people prefer to play the tank drum outside, so they aim at playing it loud and start hitting it really hard. Now I can show you an example of how not to play your tank drum. That's already too much. It's quite unpleasant even for the players themselves, as you start hearing some excessive noise and ringing. Now listen. Look, if you swing and hit it straight from your shoulder, the bead obviously becomes hard, so you should avoid such cases. 
To make sound and enjoy it, you should only touch the tones which will immediately resonate and then control the volume level without making it too loud. If you play it with fingers, there are no restrictions. I don't know how hard you should beat even straight from your shoulder to endanger the instrument. But if you play with sticks, you should always be careful. As for sticks, we only use the ones with a wooden finish. They're soft enough and bouncy at the same time. So they contribute to the sound. Some other tank drum manufacturers use a rubber finish, reminding of a bouncy ball. Such sticks are heavier and more rigid, so if you choose them to play your drum, mind that they bend the tones harder and you should constantly watch the beat. Besides, you mustn't play the tank drum with any inappropriate items or so-called foreign objects that can apparently scratch the coating or hit your tank drum in a too harsh and severe way or produce an unpleasant ruining effect. Basically, that's what I can advise you to do. Also, if you put your tank drum on a desk, you need to think about its lower part being scratched. To prevent it, put the instrument on a soft surface or, which is even better, your lap, to feel the vibration spread. So may the good and harmony be with you all.